Peace and blessings. YouTube. I'd like to speak about death in this video. First of all, my mother just passed on December 23rd, 2012. Her name is Pauline Lalith Clark. Beautiful woman, inside and out. She wasn't a part of East Elmhurst or Corona community. From what I've been told, she was the community. She was also known as Driver, because she liked to party. And whenever that song, Driver, came on, Driver, my mother turned into a party animal. So Pauline Lily Clark, born September 20th, 1953. We love you. Always will love you. Everybody know you. You're the best. So, because of your passing, I'd like to speak about this subject called death. I formerly spoke about the subject called um, immortality. I didn't really get to finish that video or go in depth, and I don't even know how deep I'm gonna get into this. But the thing with death is that it's not—it's not really what everybody thinks it is. It truly is a transition. And what happens is there's three modes of material nature. There's the mode of goodness or sattva gunna. Then there's the mode of passion, raja gunna, and then you have the mode of ignorance or darkness and that's tamagunna tamagunna and when a person lives in tamagunna you can tell they have certain characteristics they are they like to eat food that's more than 10 hours old or like to eat a lot of dead animals then a person in rajagunna or the mode of passion they like to eat a lot of spicy foods or foods that cause a lot of um digestive problems like onions and garlic and stuff like that. Well, not necessarily that they cause digestive problems, but a lot of the spices do. And then you have sattva gunna. Those people eat live foods, and they eat a lot of dairy, and they eat like you know, fruits, vegetables. Purity, you know, they don't eat no mushrooms and no fungus growth. And usually when a person lives in those three modes, they get locked into an energy mode or a karma pattern. When you are in the mode of ignorance, like you like to sleep a lot or whatever, you know, what happens is you can come back as an animal that likes to hibernate for six months out of the year. Or you can come back as a motionless living entity like a tree and you just stand there for a thousand years. Then a person in the mode of passion, they usually reincarnate with a business status because they are always trying to suck the last bit of the juice out of the fruit meaning they got to get everything they could get out of the material life they got to have every experience every piece of sex every woman or man that passes by they got to sex them every ill food they got to eat it that's more the mode of passion every dollar they got to have it and then the mode of goodness is a person who's more on an intellectual or a spiritual platform the mode of goodness is the mode that humans want to strive to live in because that's the mode that can help you ascend to the transcendental level there's only one transcendental level that in actuality truly exists and that is the mode of divine love some people call it uh, bhakti yoga devotional service any devotee is good you straight no matter what you do when you pass on you go into the highest realm because that's where your energy pattern is first of all it's very important to understand that man Human beings, living entities, whether you're a bug or you're the big Brahma, the creator of the universe, as long as you're a living entity, you could be an Orisha, natural, human, demigod, as long as you're on a material plane, you are suffering from some sort of material conditioning. You have a physical body that has a beginning and an end. The spiritual body or Jiva Atma, the, 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 the soul, the uh, living entity Jiva Atma, the rebellious being, that's why you're down here on the material plane. That Jiva Atma is composed of the light of God. It's a soul spirit. According to the Bhagavad Gita, you can't cut it with a knife or burn it with any fire. No matter how hot, it can't be drowned by water. It can't be destroyed. It had no beginning or end. That is actually the true you. That's the person you're trying to find. And that person constitutionally is a servant of the Almighty. Now, people might not like that. They say, I'm God. Yo, I'm God. Yes, you are God in quality, but not in quantity. We are all only, all of us living entities are basically only aware up to the extent 
of our physical bodies. But this being you call God or the supreme being, he, she is aware on all levels and aware of all bodies simultaneously. So the difference between the living entity and God, and I'm not talking about your body, I'm talking about the spirit in you, is you are the same quality. A gold chain is the same thing as all of the gold in the mines in the world. But the quantity of the gold in the mines is much greater than the quantity of the gold that's on your wrist, finger, or your neck. So the living entity has every attribute or most of the attributes of the Almighty, but we are lacking in size. We are only conscious of our living environment. So therefore, you are a servant. Whether you like it or not, you're going to serve something. You're going to serve your wife, your husband. You're going to serve your desires, or you're going to serve God. Those who serve God are eternal beings. Death has no power over them. And I want to point out something very important about death and when you die if you die during a waxing moon when the moon is growing in size you're automatically promoted to the transcendental abode if you die during the time when the moon is waning or shrinking in size then if you're a devotee or if you're a highly elevated being you'll either go to a higher material planet and reincarnate or you'll reincarnate on the same level or you'll reincarnate lower so it depends on how you act in your life if you die when the sun is on its northern path between December 21st, the winter solstice, and June 21st, if you die when the sun is in the northern hemisphere, you automatically go to Vaikuntha Loka, the transcendental abode of which there is no coming back. You are going to achieve or attain a body that is composed of eternity. Your body is composed of absolute knowledge, and your body is composed of absolute bliss the spiritual realm is very jaded it's it has unlimited quantity whereas the material plane has limited quantity there's high level activity to the point of stillness on the spiritual plane because everything's eternal it never changes and yet it's always changing but it's never going the word vaikunta actually means without anxiety it's an abode where there's no anxiety so for those those of you material beings who want to get to a place where there's no anxiety you pass through the gates of death as a devotee and the, the purest way to open that heart chakra is by doing mantras and of course you know what i'm going to say next do the hari krishna mantra hari krishna hari krishna 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 hari 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 rama hari rama 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 hari hari that chant right there opens up your heart chakra so you can actually enter back into the eternal abode so speaking of death one we got to understand i am not this person i'm not this capri scott this sun man patu that is a caricature it's made by material nature it's a product of aham or my ego identification with the material body is a product of ego your supreme ego the soul knows that it is a servant of God and it is an eternal being. It has no beginning or end. This has been proven through all kind of scriptures and all kind of metaphysics. There's no beginning or end. What's the material body? Well, the material body is a few elements and it goes back to the earth and to the material universe. I'll start with fire, water, air, earth, and then you have ether. Stop saying ether is a spiritual thing. It's a material thing. It's just a more subtle material element. Then you have two more subtle, very subtle or sublime material elements. Those are the mind and intelligence. Those are all physical things. Okay, you got the gross elements and you got the sublime elements. The soul, however, the person, the Jiva Atma, the real person, you are the one who is experiencing this matrix. You got to find out who that person is. It's eternal. Like I said, can't be cut by can't be cut by a knife, can't be crushed, can't be destroyed. Okay, there's no pain for that being. Just absolute bliss. Because we're suffering from material conditioning, we are disillusioned or illusioned by this thing called death. The cessation of the physical body is just a hiccup. There is no such thing as death. My mother was blessed to die on the 23rd, right after the solstice on 2012. So, according to Bhagavad Gita, she going straight. She going straight. Ain't no ghost lingering around. No spirit. You know, maybe she left that intelligent body, that mind body, that ether body. That can interact on the physical plane. One second, what? 
Oh, oh, oh. Uh, I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. Tell him I'll be right there. So, you know, I got to wrap this up. If you need more information or have any more questions, feel free to ask. But that's what I want to say about death. You know what I mean? It's not real. It's an illusion. And you're going to choose another body according to the karma that you build up in this life. Try to make your last thought a godly thought. Okay? The mind is disturbed at death. And the Hare Krishna mantra, the more you do it, the more it will train your soul to remember Krishna at the time of passing from the physical body. With that, I like to say peace and blessings and one love, y'all.